At one time, there were cotton mills all over the South, and right here behind me is one of those old mills. Now, unfortunately, a lot of those mills have either been torn down or stand in ruin like this one behind me. Some of them, however, have a happier ending, and they've been repurposed into luxury condos and apartments. We're in Lawrence, South Carolina, inside of what used to be a big textile mill. This place was huge, and it had, I don't know, one, two, three, four, five, six, about six stories maybe, and uh, went way down that way, and there was part of the building here. But the only thing that really stands now is uh, there's a couple of elevator shafts here, and uh, I'm not exactly sure what these are yet because we haven't gone inside and looked. But it's really funny. If you look behind me, you'll see a little alcove there, and there's a drinking fountain right there, still standing. But you can't get to it because the floors are gone. So there used to be walls all around us. Uh, there, were, there were floors and a roof, of course. All that's been demolished. The only thing standing are the pillars left and the big smokestack over there, which uh, is just off camera. A lot of these mills suffered fires. At that point, they were either pushed over or they just fell in by, of their own accord. From the looks of it, this may be a multi-story restroom complex because there's a drinking fountain there and there's two openings here. They look like restrooms. And above, I'm seeing pretty much the same thing. So let's poke in here a bit and see what's going on. Well, this is definitely a restroom. A restroom inside a derelict cotton mill. It's been a long time since anybody's done their business in this place. So this piece on the floor here, initially I thought that was a roll of toilet paper, but that's actually thread that was used in the mill. Look at that. Seriously? That was a roll of thread. Thread, really? Yeah, a roll of thread. Oh. So I climbed up that ladder. It was pretty sketchy and a few of the rungs are shot, so I had to be careful going up there. But like I suspected, this entire tower here is nothing more than restrooms. That's the only thing left in this tower is the restrooms, so. It looks like these were more restrooms with sink section or a shower, I'm not quite sure. It's funny how the bathrooms are the only things that have survived all of this. Now you know where to go in a case of earthquake. <laughs> We have the towel, paper towel dispenser. This is where the sinks were. There was a urinal and the toilets. And then if you look up, you can see it was a much taller ceiling. They put a drop ceiling in there for the venting. It is simply incredible to me how well the bathroom building all the way up is still standing. It's not just one floor, it's all of it. Hey, and look, at there's a door right there. One of them still has a door. <laughs> Everything you see here was once indoors in this very large factory. All these towers, stairwells, restrooms, and it went all the way down to the end there. Now, these towers you see, these are called buttresses, and their job was to hold up the brick walls. So the brick walls needed something to resist the force of moving this way or this way, and that's what the buttresses did, and they were firmly attached to that. For some reason, the walls are gone now, but the buttresses remain. Down under all this dirt and rubble, this is the original factory floor right here. See how smooth that is? It's a nice concrete floor. So I came up and took a closer look at these buttresses, and there's evidence here that these buttresses were added later. So it appears that the brick wall originally was just straight, like you would build something way back in the old days, but there probably was some kind of a structural issue. Maybe they were getting a little bit weak and uh, they felt they needed to be reinforced. 
So they put these concrete buttresses in in order to stabilize the building. And the reason that I know that they're modern is look at these lines right here. Those form boards that were used were plywood. And we've been using plywood in this country since the 1950s, maybe a little bit before that. But if they had been older, the form boards would have been about this wide. So that's how we know that these are uh, probably at least mid 20th century forms, which were added later. Back in the good old days, factories ran on steam power. And to have steam power, you had to have boilers, which meant you had to burn something. They probably burned coal back in those days. And in order to get the exhaust out of here, they had to have this big chimney. And that chimney goes up and up and up and up and up and up and up. How would you like to be the guy that put those bricks on? Here's a big pit. Now, originally I thought that that was probably a creek until we came over and looked a little closer. Now, most likely this thing here was the boiler house because it sunk low. And remember, boilers always have to be below the systems that they feed. So that probably was a boiler house, which is no longer here. And the only thing left is bricks and concrete. But over here, if you take a look, this is the chimney. And right there is, is the exhaust. So that boiler house, would have connected to this chimney up there and the flue exhaust would have come up in here and gone up the stack and out. Um, on the other side, there's a clean out and that clean out is just full of ash. This concrete pad I'm standing on here very likely was the entrance to the boiler house, which is down over here in this whole area. So you would have come in here and you probably would have gone down some stairs down into where the boiler sat. The only part of the building that survived was the bathrooms and the stairwell. Let's go see what's up there. They're good and solid. So here's the next floor up, and that would have gone into the factory floor above, but the door's gone and it really goes nowhere. You really don't want to go out there. And there's nothing here, seriously. There's nothing here, a, a window, an old electrical box, which you can't see. So let's continue up. Ooh, there's an Ouija board on the floor. Yeah, not good. There will be spirits in the stairwell. Let's hope not. Yeah. Another this door to nowhere. The same. Watch that wood over there, though. Yeah, it's pretty sketchy. There's a hole right there. Yeah. Another window. Here's a door, which, it opens. is it open? Yes. Oh, I thought it was locked. It probably locked back in the old days to keep factory workers out. Be careful. It is kind of dark, but it's passable. Okay. It smells really musty in here. Very dark, too. Wow, look at all of this. What were these boxes used for? 
I think they were cubby holes for parts or mail or paychecks or who knows what exactly it was. But look at the huh. look at those. They had arches there oh. that used to have windows in them, and wow. they bricked them in. Took the windows out. Hmm. And then they put all these things in here. At least they left a little window over there. Yeah, that was about it. And then they had <laughs> fluorescent lights above and fire sprinklers too, which probably was put in in the 70s maybe. Yeah. But uh, anyway, yeah, this is an amazing space. Yeah, it is. Really neat space. Well, that's it. There's nothing else to see, so let's get out of here. We drove just down the road to a small town called Hunya Path, and here's another mill, which uh, also has fallen into ruin. As you can see behind me, there isn't much left except the chimney and a small section of the building itself. As we parked here, one of the neighbors popped out and said, don't let the law catch you here, basically is what she said. So <laughs> we, uh, we won't be going inside this one because people are watching. Um, the other one, I don't think anybody really cared, but. This one here, I guess, I guess they had a fire recently, so people are on edge a little bit. But you can see there isn't much left. But at one time, this was a bustling factory. By the way, the reason we're doing this is because we haven't closed on our house. We're just out just having fun, knocking about, taking film, and we're not really here necessarily to do a documentary series on this thing. And we thought it would be fun if you came along with us. So let's go find another one. We're in the town of Malden, South Carolina, and this is the Conesty Mill. There's a really neat waterfall over there, and that's where they got their water power back in the day. And right behind the camera position, which you can't see, there's this nice park back there. They've got lakes and they've got trails, and there's a famous trail called the Swamp Rabbit Trail, which actually I believe is right over there. And it goes all the way up to Traveler's Rest, which is north of Greenville. It's a really long trail that's used a lot for biking. But that's not why we're here. We're here to talk about this place. South Carolina used to have lots and lots of mills, and so many of them have either just fallen down, burned out, been torn down. A few of them have been repurposed, but there really aren't very many mills left in operation. In fact, I hear that there may be just a small handful. To my knowledge, there's none of them working in these historic buildings like this. So it's just a shame to see the buildings get ruined. Uh, but there are still a few examples like the one behind me, which are still salvageable and could be repurposed into something useful. I've always been a fan of early industrial architecture. There's so many of these around the area. It just really, it's almost like a candy store for me in a way, but, but look at this building back here. Every single wall was built out of bricks. And so somebody had to lay all those. It's not like today where you just build a concrete wall and tip it up. No, these were done by masons and they were very good at what they did. But look at that. You've got factory windows up there with, uh, with steel frames and multiple panes. Uh, in fact, it appears that the panes may have been painted, old iron stairs, you've got what looks to be some kind of a grand entrance down there. Maybe that was an office area. If you just pan around a little bit, you're going to see the same thing. You're going to see beautiful brick buildings. That one over there has arched windows in it. Uh, back there in the background beyond, if you look between the two buildings, you can see the same thing. You've got arched windows. You've got, if you can see there, uh, a stone foundation, which means this place is pretty old. And then it looks like they may have added an upper floor at one time because the bricks on top are different. And not only that, but the windows above are square, whereas the ones below have arches. So you can see an evolution there as the building had to grow to accommodate their needs. Down over there, I think it's pretty cool that there's a, a, a walkway linking the second floor up here to the hillside, where you could go down a set of steps. Um, over there, just beyond, you can see a white building. Uh, again, that's the evolution of the architecture. As time went by, they needed more space, and so they put up a concrete block building. Strictly utilitarian, there's nothing beautiful about it at all. It's unfortunate, but what brings these buildings down more than any other thing is the roof. 
If they don't take care of the roof, it leaks, water gets in, it hits the wooden floors, the wooden floors rot out, pretty soon they collapse, the roof collapses, and now you're left with a shell that's useless. I'd like to show you the difference here. So this is an example of modern industrial architecture, and it really isn't architecture, it's just strictly functional, strictly business. There's nothing beautiful about it at all. Back over there is the river, and there's a waterfall behind it that we can't see that actually powered the mill back in the day. 